Hey, we're back again to Coon Prairie Ramblers Rambling right along. Rambling Rose. Yes, we got Rambling Rose. Luke, the rebel without a clue. We got me, the amiable, amiable mailman, and we got Less Ness no, no less them. <laughs> no less, no yeah. more. No less, no more. Yeah. Four slugs from a forty four. Like the, like the uh, epitaph And we was talking about your previous... Uh, oh, I, was, I know what I was going to ask you about. You, you were a pharmacist. Do pharmacists have a... Like dentists have a high rate of suicide? What? Well, well, still is there really, anything particular about pharmacy? Well, you get you, the other thing you have to realize, pharmacists are in the cookie jar. Yeah. So addiction and diversion, even in the t- years I worked, if we even go back 30 years... Um, it was worse in the 80s when cocaine was there. But, yes, um, there's a lot of people that get dependent on it. Um, and then now that we've had the, the hydrocodone issue, mm-hmm. um, the thing that saved me is I was always drug tested. You know, I've been good. fingerprinted, drug tested. That's they even right. did hair samples. Very um, good. Wow. So I probably have had 150 polygraphs. Yeah. Um, good for that's you. how you keep the cupboard clean. That's right. Uh-huh. Nobody can come back on you with anything. Suicide, now. yes. I have, I have, and even <laughs> close to home. My wife had a, I'll make it quick, but my wife had a partner yeah. um, that did relief for him. He worked at Publix. And when they started doing the inoculations for um, yeah. flu and stuff, he did everything right, gave the lady the shot, and then she developed Gan Barr. And mm-hmm. she had paralysis, and Ooh. he felt so bad about it. And even though she knew it wasn't his fault, he took it to heart. And a week later, he just wrote a note and said, I can't, wow. I can't live with the fact I harmed someone. That's and, someone who truly loved his profession. And, and he went out in the yard and wow. ended his life. Yeah. And it affected us because... Well, what would it do that lady? I mean, she found out that he... She was, she was broken. Oh, man. Yeah. And There's two lives that are ruined. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I had a uh, my foot operator one, one time with a, by a podiatrist, and he told me that before being a podiatrist, he was a pharmacist. And I'm thinking, what? Uh, something drove you away from pharmacy? And he said, he said, no. He says, I just wanted to branch out and do something different. Hmm. You that you in your career that you ever. Say, I think I'm in the wrong career? No, because mine changed all the time. You know, I I worked for Eckerd's for almost 20 Mm -hmm. years, and I always was getting new jobs. And Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I started as a kid on the floor putting up stock. Uh, I even met Jack Iger when I was 17, didn't know who he was. And Mm -hmm. he came up and said, what's your name? And I said, Les. And he said, "Uh, what are you doing? I said, well, I want to go to pharmacy school. So I thought sanding floors and detailing cars wouldn't get me any experience. So I got a job with your I didn't even know who he was with this company. He says, well, do good. And, where were you uh, at when you met him? Uh, in Clearwater at a store. Well, that's uh, where he started, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And I was 17. It was 1971. And uh, I saw him six months later, and he walked up, and he said, hey, Les, how's it going? I said, No kidding. I said, I'm working this summer. So the next summer he saw me, and I kept moving up in the store. And Good then man. when I worked for the company, when he owned it, um, it was a personal company. He mm-hmm. sent you personally signed birthday cards. Wow. He had a photographic memory. He would meet people, and then the next time he saw them, he'd remember your wife, your kids. Um, That's crazy. So I was 18 and working at a grand opening, and he said, come outside. I want you to meet someone. It was Mr. Jenkins from Publix. So here's the two mega stars of two companies, that, mm-hmm. re- and they were just regular wow. guys. That's like Evan Edison and Henry Firestone. Henry Ford used to hang out here in Arcadia and also Fort Myers. I mean, it's uh, superstars. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was just, a, both of them said, if you want to succeed in your life, just be who you are. Don't try to be somebody else, but find a profession you like. That's great advice right there. And, you know, I, I chose pharmacy. Um, I wanted to be a priest, but I looked up celibacy when I was eight and said, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, wanted to be, the next. I, I wanted to be a plumber, worked with my uncle until he did a septic tank. I said, no. no. Oh, so my last relative was a pharmacist. I did a lot of plumbing. I, I went with him. Yeah. That's, that's where he went. went. I never wanted to be a plumber, but one time I watched a plumber fish out a, uh, a septic tank. Yeah, like you. And I'm thinking, whoa, that was rough. Hey, <laughs> one slip. Yeah. I got plenty of plumbing stories. But we'll, and he was we'll fishing up some really time. strange stuff out of that. Mm-hmm. We'll do plumbing one week, one sometime. I got a lot of plumbing stories. <laughs> yeah, you do. But you got no regrets about being a pharmacist. Mm-hmm. No, you know, we talked about it. A lot of people did change the profession. A lot of people got out of hmm. got out of school and worked a few years and found out it was, it was nothing they mm-hmm. thought of. 
Well, after all that school, I imagine the, you got to go to school for how long? Well, we did five years. Our, right. our degree was five. Mm-hmm. The new one's six, and it's a doctor. Were you a doctor? Is that not at the time? We had clinical specialties, but we weren't a doctor. Um, that degree came along later. Hmm. Uh, it took another year of school and hmm. clinical rotations. But the debt structure these young people have for mm-hmm. school is just phenomenal. I bet it's outrageous. They're coming out, oh, and more than I can, you know. I got out, I had 37 cents and had enough money to pay our first month's rent. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> these kids are just, you know, and I paid my way through school. So yeah. wow. you couldn't do it today. Wow. No. You say you kept your license up. Yeah, I still if have you it. you want to go back or whatever. And pharmacists have two licenses. They have a regular practice one, and then there's a clinical one that's a consultant. So you can oversee hospitals, nursing homes. And that's, you know, you said, did you get bored? I always branched out and did other things. Mm-hmm. Right. So even when I was working retail, I was doing hospital. Yeah. You, know, you just keep yourself in the business. But if you're not working for anybody, you can still write prescriptions and stuff. Well, yeah, you know, you can fill in. I could do that. But, you know, I was at the beach t- three years ago, and I told Mary, you know, I... 40 years, I'm, I'm ready to hang it up. And uh-huh. She said, you could have retired two years ago. And I said, why don't you tell me? She said, I, heard that. I put all that money in the bank. There you <laughs> so, go. I heard that. Yeah. You know, there's wow. a time to leave. Yeah. And I, I'd reach mine. Hmm. And the industry's changed. I don't blame you. Well, I never thought the Coon Prairie Rams would be talking about pharmacy. There you go. Well, we had uh, we had, we had a lot of pharmacists here over the years. Like back in the old days, you had uh, Coleman Brewer down there at Coke's Drug Store, mm-hmm. and you'd call him on the phone. He'd meet you down there in the middle of the night and mix you up something. Where he'd say, "Well, um, here's what I think you need instead. Why don't you just take some and he'll tell you some stuff you had in the in your cabinets or whatever, and do this and do that or whatever, and you're, that'll work for you." I mean, he. Yeah, he was. And, he was and Mr. Dowd. I worked for both of them, for Mr. Dowd and for yeah. him. And it's funny because originally Coleman worked at Arcadia mm. Drug and Mr. Dowd worked at Coke's. And they switched. And they switched. Mm. That's, that's so, you know, <laughs> um, the good part about when I first came to town, I was the bad boy. I was the new kid from the chain. He was you a know, threat. Eckerd Drugs. Mm. There were two mm-hmm. independents. Young whippers that, never coming yeah, in here. You know, these guys college. come in here and they don't know. Um, but my company allowed us to make a pact with them that we would run our pharmacy in this town like they ran theirs. We would lend, borrow, mm-hmm. and, and take care of each other. And that's that's where we succeeded. You know, we that's were right. all In a small town, you have to do and, something and, like that. Um, and the only reason I ever left them is the day I had a new boss, and he said, you know, people here in Arcadia don't need customer service. And I said, well, then mm-hmm. you don't need me. Then. I heard that. That's and ridiculous. It's time to leave. So. That, that's foundational yeah, right there. That would have been you the, have the that. opposite statement. you got to have that or you, you ain't know. got nothing. In a small town, because mm-hmm. word of mouth will make you and it'll break yeah. you. Well, that's when you get too big. You know, when you get a corporation that gets arrogant and loses track of the value of every customer. Yeah, everybody's yeah. just a number you then a after neighbor, that. You have a neighbor that's a pharmacist. Uh, uh, used to be councilman. I can't think of his name. Who? Uh are you making this up? No, no, no. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Tell me. Over on the corner of Gibson and and some other street. Well, anyway, I can't think of it. Well, I'll think of it at the break. Sure. You, you know, are. the other thing about a small town, um, at one time I, my wife and I have worked with four or five partners. Eventually, two of them got married and then divorced. So you have to keep your... You learn that don't say much around town because everybody's a cousin. Well, I heard that. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Keep, Definitely. In a small town. Say anything you want that could <laughs> yeah. be repeated in church and you'll do fine. Yeah. I was running against uh, <laughs> Terry Wells for uh, county commission back in 02. And I was talking to uh, some guy. And, and then he says, careful, Mal. He's my cousin. <laughs> and Mal changed strategies right there. Okay. Uh, and he's a pretty nice guy. <laughs> wow. You do yeah. what you got to do. But. Well. A lot of changes in the industry, just like most every other industry. It's going to mm-hmm. evolve and yeah, stuff like that. So whatever. yeah. Well, when I grow up, I want to be a, a mortician. I want to just get my bucket list. Yep. Well, my bucket's got a hole in it. So this is one of your bucket list things. Yes. Being on the radio with the Coon Prairie Ambers. It is. Oh the, my you know, goodness! You forgot to wear the, the hire, signature uh, higher camo, standards. Coon Prairie Ramber camo. Yeah, there like this go. camo I'm wearing right yeah. here. This is, I have Walmart camo on. They, oh, what is wrong with you? You going frog hunting or what? Anyhow, we're less than 30 seconds, so we'll see you soon in segment three.